Hey everyone, this is Scott Lobdell. This is just a quick tutorial video on how to go about implementing an inertial measurement unit or an IMU using conventional sensors that you might have in a phone or either just sort of a sensor kit that's typically uh, you know, fairly commonplace. So basically this involves a, a setup where you have an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a magnetometer. Her, let me spell correctly. Okay, so if you have these three sensors, then you can effectively fuse them together and, and toss them into an IMU and get uh, some outputs from that. So, if we throw these into an IMU, and we'll go through the implementation details of this, then the outputs of that should be pitch, yaw, and roll. And then you'll also be able to ascertain uh, an acceleration vector in terms of um, absolute uh, absolute value. So you can get absolute acceleration north, east, and down. And so this dramatically simplifies sort of localization problems. So just to sort of expand from here, if I have these three sensors, then what I'm going to get is uh, you know a vector in every single direction. So x, y, and g, x, y, and z for the gyroscope, magnetometer, and uh, accelerometer. All right, so here are your raw inputs. It's fairly straightforward to sort of get these values from your sensors. Now, the first thing that you're going to have to account for is that your magnetometer will likely not be calibrated. So what this means is that depending on uh, the device that you have, um, what sort of, you know, like where the battery is placed in a phone or a single board computer or whatever, and then whatever else uh, you might have. This. So you have a phone mounted on a car mount, for example, that might affect the magnetic field of the sensor. So what you'll need to do is calibrate for your particular location and your particular setup. And so what this effectively is, is that if you, or, or, or what you can do at least, if you just take the phone and you just sort of ro start rotating it in all directions, then you're going to end up it'll be possible to like plot some points and it's hard to see here but basically you'll, you'll end up getting some points that you know look something like this if I plot like a whole bunch so this is the y-axis you know you get the same on the x-axis here you'll get like a bunch of points plotted I won't draw the z-axis but you get the idea ideally this should create like a perfect sphere if you rotate it in all directions so all you need to do is just take the median value so if I take the median x and I take the median y and then I shift these values then I'm going to get up, get a, a thing where it's, everything is centered as I rotate it. So basically you just need to take the median uh, x, y, and z value over a period of time where you've calibrated and then apply some offset uh, to get calibrated value. So essentially if we take these now, apply some offset, then we'll get, you know, cleaned m, x, m, y, and m, z. Okay, so that is the first step. The next step, now that now that we have a, a good magnetometer reading, we have gyroscope, we, so we have acceleration as well, as well. Now if we pass all of these values into an AHRS, which is an attitude heading and reference system, uh, we can get a rotation matrix from this. So I just sort of glossed over some details, so I'll, I'll catch you up on that real quick. So essentially there's multiple implementations of AHRSs, which is, is essentially some sort of sensor fusion between all nine of these inputs. So um, you can get you know, more clean and accurate data if you, if you use various sensors to cancel out each other's errors, something to that effect. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm a pro pragmatic programmer, not a college professor, so excuse me if my, um, my explanations here aren't very great. But... Uh, one such implementation of an AHRS, the one that I've been using, is the Magwick Quaternion Update. And you can Google this, and you'll get much more in-depth explanations of this. You can read white papers about it, uh, but that's a good thing you, you essentially want to reference. So the point being here is that you don't need to know how to implement this. You just need some sort of implementation of it that takes these inputs, and then it's going to spit out some outputs. The output here is going to be a quaternion, which, if you don't know what quaternions are, I'll do my best to explain them concisely, but I would recommend taking the time to go and watch another tutorial video that sort of explains what these are and what they mean exactly. But if I, if I just give you a gloss over concise explanation, a quaternion is 
a, is impossible to visualize in your head because it is an abstract mathematical concept. But essentially, it allows you to have a vector with an up direction. And so in this way, you can represent, say, pitch, yaw, and roll. You can represent any sort of uh, three-dimensional angle. Uh, and the reason why you can't visualize it is because it's like a four-dimensional vector on a hypersphere. So I won't go into details on that. The important thing to note is just that it, it, this a quaternion is a way to represent angles in a 3D environment. Um, and so once you have a quaternion, from here you can get your pitch, yaw, and roll values. And you can almost stop there. But again, the this is this is the how to get pitch yaw and roll from here is just really an implementation detail. All you need to do is just do a little bit of Googling. Um, it's also important to note that if you were to stop here, you essentially need to account for magnetic declination offset here. So um, when you if, if you're not familiar with this term, basically when you read a compass and the compass is pointing north, that's magnetic north, but it is not true north because essentially there is the Earth's magnetic fields are not fields are not straight up and down. Depending on your location, there's going to be some offset. So what you'll need to do is take your particular location um, and basically just apply some offset. So I'm here in San Francisco, so that happens to be at this point in time a 13.2 magnetic declination off offset. So all I need to do is rotate uh, rotate these values by that amount, and now I have pitch, yaw, and roll. But if we want to complete this and get acceleration values as well in, in usable formats, um, we can keep going. So the acceleration values you get from uh, your sensor is going to be you know, in body coordinates. They're going to be relative to your dev device that's making the measurements. So this isn't particularly useful if you're doing any sort of like localization or... Um, or, or mapping or things like that. So you want to be able to to output values in something that you can understand. So what we can instead do is we can transform these. Sorry, we can transform these in terms of uh, north, east, and down, which is a much more understandable format. Uh, in addition to this, if we if we do this rotation, then it's also trivial to strip gravity out of the, that equation. So let's go from there. So if we have a quaternion, then we can convert that into a rotation matrix. And then this will make it so that we can actually do some sort of simple math to go about rotating an input vector. So you, this is, again, another implementation detail. It's not really hugely important. Uh, but what you need to know, at least, is that this outputs a 3 by 3 matrix. And so, again, I'm glossing over some details here. But uh, in a lot of these cases, you don't need to understand the implementation details if you can just sort of get a copy on Stack Overflow or whatever. But you should at least understand how matrix multiplication works, or at least like the dimensions of, of, of uh, matrix multiplication. So for example, it's important to understand that you could have a 3 by 3 matrix, and you can multiply that by a 3 by 1 vector. That is you know, useful to know. So. Anyway, I'm going to sort of like move this over here. So we have our quaternion. We convert it into rotation matrix. So what this means then is that if I have some rotation matrix and my device is at rest, sorry, I'm going to move this up a little. If I have a rotation matrix and my device is at rest, then that means that I will get you know, acceleration values in terms of free fall of gravity. So this is what my AX, AY, and AZ is going to look like at rest, essentially. 0, 0, 1. Here's the gravity vector. So if I take my rotation matrix and multiply it by uh, this vector here, I should end up getting my actual AX, AY, and AZ coordinates. So this would be a good point to val validate that everything you've done correctly up to this point is working. If you could take a rotation matrix, multiply it by this vector, and get your AX, AY, AZ values, then the way that you've computed ro your rotation matrix is correct. So now, if then, if I say, um, I'm going to go ahead and get another piece of paper here. So if I say that... Uh, this rotation matrix multiplied by this vector is this value, then I should be able to, you know, given these values and given this rotation matrix, I should be able to solve 
for this right here, which is what we want. We want to output uh, acceleration in northeast and, and down values. So what I can instead say in this equation is that, uh, you know, it will say acceleration north, acceleration east, acceleration down equals... Now, you know, with normal arithmetic here, you would just divide right here, uh, you know, divide by this and then put it over here. But these are matrices, so you can't actually divide. So it's just uh, an inverse matrix. So if I say this is rotation matrix inverse multiplied by my, uh, my acceleration vector, then I should be able to solve for all of these values. Um, so this is another sort of detail where you can find some code that just takes the inverse of a 3x3 three three matrix. Uh, you would then multiply these, this matrix by this vector, and now you will be able to get acceleration in terms of north, east, and down. It's also important to note that uh, my coordinates are, or the direction of my axes are not necessarily correct. So this might actually be acceleration south, east, and down. Um, the point is it doesn't really matter, but you should be able to sort of implement this and then find out which way your vector is, is facing and then just apply the appropriate uh, multipliers to put them into the, the correct axes that you can at least work with. But the important point thing is that these are at least in these directions. So anyway, back to where I was at. You can imagine that if, if my uh, device is sitting at rest, then I will be getting some values that are close to you know, 0, 0, and 1 for gravity. And so it's also nice at this point because th now you can trivially remove gravity from your accelerometer. So uh, if, basically if I just offset this value by 1, then at rest I'm now 0, 0, 0, and now I can easily sort of move my device around and I can get acceleration in absolute terms uh, that are a lot easier to work with and understand. So now we, ha we finally have all these values the last thing to account for is that same uh, magnetic declination offset I brought up earlier. So over here. So now I have a vector in north, east, and, and down. If I take these two values, and I'll just go ahead and rewrite this. I have acceleration north, acceleration east, and acceleration down. If I take these values and I rotate them by... Uh, magnetic declination offset, because these are still in terms of magnetic north and not absolute north. Uh, apply that rotation, and now I have uh, my final values. And so from here, I'll do like another tutorial video, video, but you can now take your accelerometer and sort of merge it with GPS values, for instance. So you can dead, re dead reckon and get like better localization and so forth. So uh, yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching.